it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit burnt out. I was working on my speakers. You can see one here. And um, I got the first one put together. <laughs> and while I was doing that, I was thinking about, wow, I don't have anything to, to drive these, like an amplifier with the um, high pass filter in it that I need for these speakers. So I said, well, maybe instead of putting the second one together and wrapping up the project, you should take a little side venture into building that amplifier. So I did that. <laughs> and um, I spent a good solid two weeks working on that, making several mistakes along the way. Uh, the high pass filter I talked about, I made three versions of that before I got it working the way I wanted it. Uh, the amplifier itself, which is based on a chip amp that's no longer available, but I still have a few. I made two versions of that. I made too many mistakes on the first one, so I just redid it. In doing that, I burned myself out a bit, and I got to the point where, okay, I'm, I'm standing in the shop here. It's still a mess. I haven't cleaned it up. I didn't clean it up during any of that. Instead, I added to the mess. So I'm at the point where I've got so many things that I can do and should do and need to do that I simply can't pick one and settle in on doing it. I, I come out here to start cleaning up and then I, I look at the size of the mess and I look at the state of outdoors still. It's spring here officially, but looking outdoors, you'd never say it. There's still a lot of snow on the ground and whatnot. That's keeping me from bringing the stuff that I need to bring back to the backyard to burn. Uh, sawdust, big piles, like I got barrels of sawdust in here and scrap wood to burn. And so I've been, you know, putting that off. I also had videos to edit that I've been putting off. I sit down to do that and I start doing that and I say, wow, this is going to take forever. And in the end, um, I always find a way to get out of it by convincing myself that, you know, okay, I'll do a little bit now. <laughs> and I'll finish it tomorrow. And then when, when tomorrow comes, of course, I don't finish it. And this is what it is for me anyway, to be burned out. I've um, overloaded on what I was doing. And then all I want to do is disconnect and unwind. And more or less, that's what I've been doing for the past while. But okay, along the way, I was Okay, before I started building the amplifier, and actually while I was still working on the speakers, I came up with a plan to change my drill press by taking the table off and the metal table too, and replacing that with my gear linked vise that will be permanently mounted so that anything that I want to drill a hole in, I can clamp it in the vise. And if I need the table back, the table will sit on top of the vise and clamp in the vise. So it looks like a regular drill press with a table, but you can take the table off quickly by, um, by loosening the, the vise and use the vise and you can adjust it in and out. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was raise and lower electrically. And originally I was going to do it at a threaded rod and motor. But then I got this thing taken off of that chair I took apart a few years ago. This is a um, actuator with a motor built in right here, DC motor. I got the power supply for it and it has an up, down button, up, down, and it has a good range of motion. So I think it's around 12 to 14 inches here. It looks like closer to 14. That, that will move the table up and down. And then the good thing about it is that for most drilling purposes, I wouldn't need a lock mechanism to hold the table in place because you can push down on this and it doesn't move. So it would lift the table up and I could, as long as I'm not putting too much force, I'd really have to test it on the actual build before, but I would make allowances for making a locking mechanism anyway just so that I would have the peace of mind of having the table locked when I absolutely needed to be locked. But otherwise I could use it just with the, the strength that this has as, as far as I can see anyway. All right. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be using this for. And that's likely to be my next shop project. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I've got a water bottle 
and the first step is to drain it as I just did and you put the cap back on normal tightness like you would then you twist you twist the bottle and what you're doing when you're twisting the bottle like this is you're compressing the gas that's inside and then you have to hold on to it like this with your hand and then you use your thumb thusly to um, loosen the cap so that it, it fires and I just missed the camera <laughs> try it again and see if I can hit the camera because I think that'll be more oh, I don't have to drain this one this is already drained I think that'll be more dramatic so once again twist and you want to get near the center like so and it's good to hold it in your non-dominant hand when you're doing that so that you can grab it like that when you're done twisting it three or four twists are enough and then you have your dominant hand to press the trigger. Oh. Um, I think I said that the, I'm going to be putting out less content from now on, uh, just as part of slowing things down. And I'm also going to be trying to up the quality of what I put out, as in I'm going to be focusing on, on projects that are what I consider to be good, right? And, you know, my speaker build is something, okay, this kind of exempt from that. Like, these things don't appeal to a lot of people, but they're very appealing to me. I want to be doing them, and I need these things. So, uh, that's an exception. When I do these, I'll be, you know, spending time on them, and therefore I won't have time to spend on other things. And it'll just be a normal part of things. But with that said, there is a limit to how many speakers you can build in a run of a year because you really don't need any more than, say, one or two pairs, all right? And I've kind of filled my quota, although I have another speaker project on the schedule. I don't think I'm going to get that at until later in the summer. Uh, before then, I've got quite a number of other projects to take care of, including the drill press I talked about. Also, there are a couple of projects inside my house that I need to get to, um, the furniture projects, also some other workshop related projects out here beside the drill press. I talked before about building my um, planer because I bought a new cordless one to replace the, uh, the plug-in one that I have so I could use this planer as an edge jointer. I talked about building that into the miter saw station or into the table saw. I'm still kind of weighing the options of both of those and I haven't started to design anything yet. So I've got to look at that. That's probably going to be a situation where I'll just come out and I'll pick one, flip a coin maybe, <laughs> and start building it. And then if I don't like what I wind up with, I can always change it and go back to the other one. The other thing is um, to redo a, a couple of projects that I did last year. A um, couple of shop projects, jig projects in particular, that um, I kind of messed up when I was working on my speakers here. Not on the speaker itself, but on the amplifier, the case for it. And uh, I thought of a better way to have the jig, and I'm going to make those changes along with a new base for the trim router that allows that, well, keeps that problem from happening again. And along with that, since it won't fit in my mini router table anymore, a new router table that works with the trim router. So there'll be, you know, smaller projects that are um, fairly popular and easy to do and, and actually make a difference in what you can get done in the workshop. 